In this tutorial, we will explore a few different methods for using Twixter specifically in DaVinci Resolve. We will be covering two do's and one don't. We'll also touch on a couple of other revision effects plugins. I'll demonstrate DeFlicker, Color Genius, Twixter, and ResUp Resize in this session, while breaking down this travel video further in future tutorials. Let's begin by watching the finished travel video before diving into the techniques. We can start by going to the media pool and looking at some of our clips. If I select a few and go to the inspector file, we see that most of them are 1080p. This one is 1280 by 720, but we'll see how to deal with that in a minute. We can create a new project and set project settings to 1080p and 30 frames per second. We can go to this other timeline that I've set up for this edit. I primarily used the cut page, intending it as a rough cut, but soon I realized that I could add effects directly within cut. The same effects can be added in the edit page, and they work seamlessly. However, Twixter presents a challenge when working in cut or edit when doing a slow-mo because it requires changing the clip duration. The exception here is if we are just slowing a small section or if we're speeding up. Since Twixter adjusts the time remapping, we need to use a different workflow for best results. Let's first see a few examples in Cut and Edit to see how to add our plugins directly on the timeline. In this first example, I added DeFlicker to the street scene where the shop lights were flickering. By changing the settings to Noise Clean Method, I effectively removed the flicker. In this next example, the boat sequence is a speed up, that it doesn't need workarounds as the end sequence is shorter, so we can use Twixter directly in cut or edit with effects. I just select the boat sequence and go to effects, revision effects, Twixter, and go to the effect controls, and we can do an overall speed up to 120%. In this example, I applied Color Genius to the deer shot on the timeline. First, we pre-analyze the shot so it doesn't flicker, and then adjusting the strength to 74, and then we can return to the cut or edit page. You can use it in either page. In this example, I wanted to reverse the waterfall under the title Mystical Waterfalls. So I can use Twixter in the timeline for that, seeing as the duration isn't changing. I just have to use frames instead of speed option and make a keyframe at the first frame with uh, frame 125 since that's the actual last frame. And then at the end, I can make that frame zero. That will reverse the waterfall. Okay, in this last example, the diver shot is not the same resolution as the rest of the shots. So we can see how to use Twixter for a slow-mo and then use ResUp Resize at the same time. Let's see the different methods. There are four of them. So method one, we can use a compound clip in Fusion for Twixter. Since Twixter requires lengthening the clip to slow down, we need this method that allows timeline extension. We select the clip and right mouse click and choose Create New Timeline Using Selected Clips. Now we keep the Use Project Settings checked. 
Since we're going to apply Twixter to the clip, and in the cut or edit page we cannot extend the duration beyond the original length, we're going to use a generator. So we go to Effects, Generator, and I'm going to add a solid color. We can extend the generator's length longer than the expected slowdown duration, because we can always edit that later. Now we select both the clip and the generator and right click and choose New Compound Clip. We can go to the Fusion page from here and apply Twixter. So this method ensures that Twixter has enough frames to interpolate and produce a smooth slow motion. In this next method, we can create a new timeline from the clip and add a generator again. This time we select both clips and right mouse clip and select New Fusion Clip. We go to Fusion and here we can add Twixter by right mouse clicking on the timeline add tool and Twixter and adjusting the Twixter settings from here. Or we can go to Effects, Open Effects, and Twixter. Okay, in this method, uh, this time we're going to go back to the media pool and unselect all the clips and then right mouse click in the media pool gray area and choose New Fusion Composition. We need to put in a duration that is as long as we want the total new duration to be. So in this case I'm going to make it 95 seconds because the original that I'm using is 22 seconds. I can go to the media pool and drag the diver clip in as my media in. Just a note, this method 3 is the method that we use for res up, resize, and also to do frame rate conversions. Today we'll just see resize with res up and retiming with Twixter, but we will do a follow-up tutorial with more examples soon. If I select the media in node, I can see the resolution is 1280 by 720. I can right-click in the gray area and add tool generator background and connect the out of the background to the media out and see that it's now 1920 by 1080. Now I can right mouse click and add Tool, Revision, Effects, Res Up, Resize. The white square on the media in should be connected to the green triangle. Now I can take the output of the background and connect it to the second input for resize. That's the yellow triangle. And remove the connection between the background and the media out. I can grab the output, the gray square, on resize and drag it to the input on media out. We can go to Resize and the Controls and select Fit to Canvas Size. A little gotcha is to check the loop box on Media In, otherwise when you get to Twixter you won't get the full duration upon rendering. We can add our Twixter node before Res Up Resize to save on processing time. In this case, I set a keyframe for speed percentage at frame 535. I made it 100% and just before he starts the dive at frame 571 I add a keyframe and make it 50%. I can add another keyframe at frame 658 and make it 50% to hold and then one last keyframe at 667 and make it 100%. That will go back to real time. One little trick, if we go back to our original timeline I can add this fusion comp. The way to see the thumbnail is to right click on the clip and select render in place. This will allow us to create a proxy in the timeline for ease of editing. Okay, in this last method, we can see if we take a still, and this is 1920 by 1080, and I right click and create a new timeline from the still, I can drag the length as long as I want. Now I can drag in any movie and attach the movie to my media out from my media in too. I can add Twixter and let's go back to the media in and check the loop box. This will make sure that the new frames are generated after the original duration. Okay, now here's the don't. You will want to avoid applying Twixter directly in cut or edit. That's if we're slowing things down. Applying Twixter directly in the cut or edit page without a compound clip plus fusion workaround will restrict its ability to extend the duration. This leads to incomplete slow motion results, making it unusable for clips requiring extended interpolation. To recap, do use 
cut and or edit for most revision effects plugins. Do use a compound clip and edit and apply Twixter in Fusion. Edit page does not allow one to extend clip duration, so don't apply Twixter directly in the cut or edit pages when doing a slowdown. Also note, edit page does not support two inputs as needed in color matching plugins, so should be done in Fusion or Color Page. If you compound clips in the edit page, you cannot use temporal processing tools like denoise or deflicker directly in edit page because they need to access frames at other times. By following these methods, you can effectively use Twixter and Resolve while seamlessly integrating other revision plugins into your workflow. Stay tuned for future breakdowns of more effects.